Let's see, this is the title of my slide. Obviously, it's going to take a lot longer than five minutes to go over. So I'd like to sort of start a conversation and then um, I hope to sh hopefully shed a little bit of light about how we as signal effects perform uh, uh, engineering. Um, so first of all, I think I could see you if I block out the light. Uh, can I get a raise of hand of how many of you who uh, either work in an, an organization that provide a SaaS or online service or uses online service as part of work? Okay, about maybe a third. I was hoping that 99% of you will raise your arms. <laughs> but, um, so um, it's pretty clear by now that most applications today uh, or new applications getting developed today are um, SaaS-based, basically they deliver over the internet. Um, and as a result of that, there's a set of expectations that comes along with it, right? So primarily around how uh, customers have now come to condition themselves that, hey, you know, if I'm using something over the internet, um, fixes should happen rapidly. Um, as a matter of fact, the conversation that we have with our customers are around, well, you know, not when is the fix, not what should lease the fix will be delivered, but can I try to fix now, right? So this entire production line has basically changed. And as a result, like, engineering has basically changed. So we're sort of living, all of us are sort of living in the state where we have rapid iteration of our software, right? And then ra this rapid iteration has basically changed the way uh, we think about software development. We think, talk a lot more about agile these days, sprint planning, days and weeks of when we do releases, not months or years. Um, agile is a big, big thing for us, the environment that we live in, agile process, CICD continuous integration and deployment of code constantly going into production. Uh, test automation, we have to think about, we think about the way we deal with test automation. No longer um, do we have this like test planning, test process. Instead, as part of the development process, we're talking about not only unit tests, but also adding integration tests. And that's important because in this high and fast iterative type of environment, we also have to basically be able to make sure that the changes that we make don't introduce regressions, right? So, but some of the, in order to take advantage of all this, one of the biggest changes uh, that I've seen uh, in that we practice at SignalFX is the notion of data-driven um, development. So, you now have an environment where you're delivering code multiple weeks, you have a production system that let you introduce code into production in a matter of days and weeks, but how do you know and what do you do to know that you're hitting the targets? Are you actually hitting the requirements? Because you're in this high iteration type of environment, you need to constantly measure and know whether your code changes are taking effect. So, and as a result, you know, we sort of live by data. We actually make changes um, and decisions based on the data that we observe that's happening in production. So, so let me give you some example of that. Um, so in SignalFX, uh, so one of our services is the indexing service. One of the engineers basically collecting metrics on the size of the indexing queue. He thinks that uh, at 280,000 uh, uh, writes uh, in, in the queue is something to worry about. Um, and then, so he created a chart. He's looking at this constantly. At some point, it touched it, didn't do much about it. And then it touched it again multiple times. And he said, hey, time to make a change. Um, he made necessary configuration changes, pushed it into production, went through the CI/CD process, and then observed the fact that that actually worked. So then now he's thinking about something else, another piece of project that he's working on. So this type of environment of fine grain making fine grain changes um, uh, is part of our daily lives, is basically how we actually operate as part of engineering. Uh, some of the things that we do to uh, accomplish this, um, we, you know, we instrument code uh, as part of our iteration, not just unit tests, not just integration tests, but also instrumentation. Uh, we continuously refine the insights that we build um, the chart I showed earlier talked a bit about um, the size of the queue. Now, once you remove that bottleneck, the next bottleneck happens to be, well, the rate of change um, that's going into the queue. So you want to continue to refine uh, based on the changes you're making in your code. Um, and then, you know, all this basically we make decisions on, um, at least make decisions on how we continue on the next phase and next iteration of code. Uh, some of the impacts, uh, I'm running a bit out of time here, um, you know, as 
as we practice this, you know, we're able to, you know, in light, we'll have about 20 some odd engineers uh, in signal effects. We're able to generate 99.9 .9, uh, availability. We have 30 plus or so projects in flight all the time. We'll have 15 plus or so uh, uh, weekly releases. Uh, and then we constantly measure kind of meta that we measure how well our data-driven development process is working uh, on a regular basis. Um, so I'm out of time. And then um, we're at, you know, we're at uh, booth 307. Uh, come by if you'd like to uh, tell us about your experiences with this data-driven approach or just learn a bit about signal effects. Thank you.